I make so many silly mistakes in math. I can't remember any formulas, especially in geometry. Are these some of the questions running through your mind? Expert answers coming your way in 3, 2, 1. Hi, my name is Vishnu and I'm a GRE and admission expert here at GREH. Today, we're going to decode the most common mistakes that stop students from scoring a perfect 170 in the most legit way with data. At GREH, we'd like a lot of data about a student and how they actually prepare. In fact, every millisecond is tracked to ensure each student receives the most personalized GRE training ever. In the previous video, we had covered some of the common mistakes like Number 1. Not being able to prioritize Most of the 170 scorers spend 60% of their time in learning, especially tricky topics like geometry, applied mathematics and data analysis. Number 2. Falling prey to trick questions The GRE Quant questions are designed to check how alert you are. Ensure you practice level 4, level 5 questions from all the tricky topics like geometry, permutations and combinations and probability. Alright, now the next mistake. Number 3. Silly mistakes If I asked you how many GRE aspirants actually scored a perfect 170, what would your guess be? 10%? 15%, 30 or only 5? Based on 2017 report from ETS, out of 17 lakh GRE test takers worldwide, only 4% scored a perfect 170. While there are many reasons why students miss a perfect 170, the most common one is silly mistake. In fact, how many of you have missed your target math score because you forgot to copy the right value or you forgot to convert the answer into the correct unit in the end. Your GRE is no different. Based on an internal audit of our students who missed 170 by a very small margin, here are the top 3 silly mistakes you need to watch out. The first silly mistake, marking an answer just because it appears in your calculation. In a multiple choice question, often you'll find that at least one answer choice appears as you solve the question midway. But the correct answer is actually a few more steps away. The second silly mistake, choosing only one option in a multiple selection question. Every multiple choice multiple selection question has a last byline that stays, indicate all such amounts, indicate all such digits depending on the question. You will lose marks even if you choose only one correctly. Remember, there are no points awarded for partially correct answers in the GRE. And the final one, rounding off incorrectly, especially the numerical entry questions. While you can expect only a couple of numerical entry questions, when you're aiming for a perfect 170, you gotta get every question right. And since there are no options to choose from in a numerical entry question, student tends to make the most common mistake here like rounding off values just before finishing the calculation or rounding off the final answer to three digits instead of two as the question clearly states. If you find yourself making these silly mistakes, first work on improving your accuracy without time pressure. Focus on getting the questions right. Once you've mastered that, then focus on improving your speed. Number four, forgetting formula. If you have the strongest memory in the world like an elephant, then you don't have to worry about it. But under the pressure of a ticking clock, the sheer length of the exam, and the expectation of a target score. There is nothing worse than sitting on a question knowing you can solve it. If only you could rack your brain and remember that one formula. To ensure you don't make such mistakes, I am sharing a 330 scorer's personal formula book for free in the description right below. Number 5. Spending too much time on one particular question. This is a mistake that even the best of GRE test takers do. Even though GRE is a 4 hour long examination, you have only 35 minutes to solve individual quant sections. In these 35 minutes, you are expected to solve 20 quant questions of various difficulty level. If you don't pay close attention to your time management skills, then this would be a bottleneck for you. 
Here is a guideline that most of the 170 scorers follow to keep a check on their time management. You should have reached the 5th question by 8 minute, 10th question by 16th minute, 15th question by 24th minute, 20th question by 32nd minute. How to make this happen? Set your biological clock right. In the last two weeks of your GRE, ensure that you take full length adaptive mock tests in the same time slot as that of your actual GRE. For example, if your GRE exam is at 10 a.m., your mock test should also be scheduled at 10 a.m. in the previous week. This will help you in three important ways. Build your focus, concentration and stamina for a four hour long test. Number two, hone your time management skills. And number three, familiarize yourself with the actual test pattern. Don't forget to check out GRE score predictor and see where you stand in your GRE preparations. And that's a wrap. I hope you're a little confident now on conquering your quant and getting a perfect 170 now that you know what the common mistakes are. If you like this video, click the subscribe button for more such videos on GRE and admissions regularly. If you have any specific difficulties with respect to your GRE, feel free to share in the comments box. We will definitely get back to you with more and more informative content and exciting videos ahead. Until I see you the next time, this is Vishnu from GRE Edge. Happy learning.